So hello everyone, and welcome to what's going to be another interlude video. I uh, don't intend to do so many of these, uh, but it's just kind of, at the moment, I'm just kind of chopping and changing a lot of bits and pieces, uh, experimenting with people, changing builds, that sort of thing. Uh, and it's requiring a lot of off-screen work to do, uh, which is kind of what I'm doing as well. I kind of want to play the game, but I don't want to record a ton of content for it because, like, we're... I'm miles ahead and I need the series to catch up, so uh, there has been some off-screen work. Uh, I have been doing uh, a bit more questing, just getting hold of various bits and pieces of equipment. Obviously, the last recorded video uh, was our trip to Starlight Junction, which was carnage. Uh, and I think I do still plan on going to... It's either the Iron Forest, I think, is next, um, or Magenta Shopping Street. I think it's probably going to be Iron Forest, but we'll see. Anyways, uh, I have done some off-screen work, finishing off some quests. Uh, I'll be honest, I don't entirely remember what I've done. That's just uh, the truth. So I just figured I'd have uh, troubleshoot music on because this music's fucking awesome. So, our characters. Uh, I have been playing around with these guys as well. Kind of tricking and tweaking a little, a little bit as well. So let's go through them uh, where we currently stand. Again, if you're not interested in this, this is going to feature no plot progression. So if you don't care about any of this, feel free to skip ahead. But if you've come this far into the series... Maybe you might be interested. Is anything on the drop maker list right at this moment? Oh, I have got some uh, little things to cash in here. Uh, I don't think anything too interesting here. I'm not going to do it here. Just some things. Might be some interesting stuff. I like some other things. Probably not. I've been doing... Uh, I have been grinding away a couple of uh, the Iron Forest levels. Just off screen. Getting hot on materials so I can make stuff. That sort of thing. Anyways. I'll give me some characters here. So, uh, this one's weapon to say here. That uh, was English, allegedly. Uh, we'll start with Albus. Everyone's rocking that red gear, by the way. Most people are. Uh, Albus has a new sword. The Breaking Sword of Peak. So we picked this up from Rio. You remember Rio? Uh, I went and redid the mission where we fight him. We never actually beat him just to kind of get him on the list. And uh, when we beat him, I got his sword. Or a sword, which is pretty neat here. Uh, damage increasing by 3% for currently applied swordsman and great swordsman mastery. We have a lot of those. It's pretty good. Uh, it's tough. I mean, it's a shame to put down the Assassin's one. I really enjoyed this. Uh, the fact that this gives us plus 1% block uh, meant this is very, very close. But uh, I think we've had this on long enough. It's time to change up a little bit. So we'll rock and roll with this. Should be fine. Uh, got the Glimming Shock Absorber we picked up from um, Twinkle Jack should know the name because it's literally right there. You'll be rocking that for now. So uh, basically doubling as a bit of um, whatever you want to call it, impulse field stuff basically is the plan. Um, I don't know if he's really going to need it though, but you'll notice that his block chance and dodge chance are not as high. Like if I put on um, the uh, the Assassin's Illawoke here, it gives plus 15% base, plus 1% per mastery. Now the mastery stuff is not shown on screen, but he has a lot of stuff. Um, so uh, that's kind of where we're at here with him. That's fine. We'll change the music mode, don't worry. Uh, mastery side, I have been trying to play around with Albus a bit, but I really haven't found any reason to particularly to do so. Uh, even kind of glancing around various mastery sets and stuff, I've been kind of finding out what more of them are. There's still not a ton of them that I would really particularly like. Um, you know, there's some kind of cool stuff potentially around, but like he's just his his ability is just he's pretty well set is is Albus now. We had a bit of a, a damaging part from earlier on, but it's a lot better now. There's a couple of these, I don't know, this is the uh the one head thing which I do still want. Uh, we got one here, which I don't know what it is, but like this is the problem, like some of my dies are kind of pretty heavily entrenched now. And there are a couple as well that are involving uh masteries here of great swords and stuff, but uh I don't have all of them yet, so yeah, what are you going to do? Speaking of mastery, something else we got on a Rio is this here. Bato Jutsu. Uh, which reduces cast lead by 3% per every applied mastery. Now, just a reminder. You want to have a mastery? He's got Swords and Great Swordsman. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20... 21, 22. 3% times 22 is pretty good. 3% times 22. 
it's pretty good. Just saying. So he's pretty well set, I think, now. That was going to be pretty solid for the time being. Uh, kind of considering trying to change his abilities out a little bit, but we're kind of making use of everything, you know? Uh, General Gus is always handy, and, and to be fair, now he's got some cover stuff, we kind of need him in some range. Tempting to take off Wind Veil. Don't use it a ton for him, really, now. Like, it, it's nice that it stops him from getting, um, uh, delayed, which is pretty cool. He's got some interesting stuff, you know, Wind Walk's pretty nice, it's fact it's free as well, it's pretty sweet. Magic Amplification would be good if I was going down, like, magic stuff, which I'm not for him, and then turning New Belief uh, means the net no action point is used for the next action, which is, again, pretty cool. We've got that on a machine, actually, something similar. Uh, but, um, Big Veil's pretty useful, you know, so we'll stick to that. And other than that, he's, he's looking pretty good. Alright, Sarn as well is the same thing. Like, I, I want to, like, change Sarn about here, but it's really hard to do so. Oh, one thing uh, with um, ours, so what I do plan to do is I've got Hysteria on here. I'm going to look to start getting some extra attack stuff because, of course, he's got various things like Armor Split, Castle Gate, and that sort of thing. But uh, we ain't quite got it. But yeah, Sarn as well is just, like, he's just really well heavily set. And, like, why would I ever change this? The guy's got, like... Nine active mastery sets. Um, and if we can find out what this is, I can get a tenth. Uh, really hard to tweak people around. He's about to get hold of some ability slots here. But, well, kind of doesn't have any extra ability stuff at the moment. So it, it's a little tricky. Um, but, yeah, Sarn's pretty well set. He are having a couple of issues where he like he is vulnerable to just getting crit and take out in one. Which is a problem. Um, do we have impulse fields? Can I just what is that a free cost or is that a two cost in those fields? Free coster. I will put this on him once he gets another level then, but uh, for the time being he doesn't have that. But I think that would do really well for Sarn. He does occasionally just get just ambush crit out of nowhere. So that'd be good for him. Other than that, he's also pretty pretty well set here. Uh, a lot of people's levels around like sort of 37, 38 and such, so uh, everyone's kind of still this. I do need to get him a new bracelet. This one is like nice, but it's not Right. I'll make him some more and see if I can make it's getting one that gives him lightning bonuses that's the problem but I'll need to do that alright let's calm down everyone we've had our fun let's calm down so Irene who is our highest level character currently the only person to hit level 40 and I've been making use of that she has got some level 40 equipment she's got herself a new glove here as well um, which hits really hard uh, it was a bit of a shame. The other one was actually better. It gave her, like, um, the extra vigor as well and stuff. But it's like, eh, it is what it is. Of course, we still got, like, our old gloves here. We had some good times with these. But, um, and this one's here. You will also notice as well, currently, Irene has a speed of only 62, which is not great. But the reason for that is because I'm trying to make use out of her various masteries, especially on the beast board as well here. So the beast board, for example, although her speed's not awesome, she's getting a lot of time back because usually she's defeating enemies. So Executioner is um, giving her time back. Um, also, she's getting time back with other stuff as well. Uh, what's the other mastery? There's another mastery or something that's giving her time back and stuff, but I can't recall exactly what it is. Uh, it's there, so, but that's the idea. So, although she's a bit slow, she's getting buffed by uh, other people, and she's kind of just rocking and rolling. And be fair that her beast board, she's very counter-attack heavy. If I go to her villain board, for example, it's a bit of a different story. If I go to here, her speed now, back up to 72, which is a little better, but it's not massively great. She's got a lot of health, though, which is really, really awesome, and pretty much needed. And marching board, yeah, like, she doesn't have Executioner, but she's here. Undefeated, that's the one. So she gets uh, time reductions uh, for getting people out of action. Um, just lots of, lots of good stuff that's kind of picking up time as she goes here. So, yeah, and this is the thing I have noticed and I'm experimenting. You can go down on a person's turn to 36 time units um, on the board. And if you try and get anyone below that, you physically can't do it the game will not let you. You can get it below that once you've skipped that, once the turn is over, but on that person's turn, 36 is the minimum you can get to, so you've got to be a little bit cautious of that. You can just stack so much speed on top of people, you just start losing it, and you just kind of overflow. It just gets lost, so that's a thing. But yeah, Irene's not really going to change very much, I don't think, for the time being. Um, you know, this obviously is an expensive set for her to be running. This is like, you know, freaking nine points put in just for this but obviously it's like one of the best sets in the game as far as i'm concerned it's just 
it just means I can just be highly aggressive and just go for it. And if she does get crit and just ambushed and put out of action, like she gets back up, I get next action of her and I can assess. I can, I can keep going. I can pull her back and allow the Phoenix uh, to do its job here. Phoenix is, is so, so big for us as well. Really useful, um, you know, really handy. And again, like she recovers HP per fire SP and she typically has a lot of SP going on. So that's pretty sweet. And of course, Final Flame here um, means that she's overcharged immediately. Cauterizing as well, recovering 80% of health is just so, so strong. Uh, but yeah, I don't think it's going to change too much. Um, she has nothing else to gain board-wise either. So if I do want to add more stuff to her, I'm going to have to give things and put things on that's going to improve like her uh, abilities, her training points, her um, uh, available like points per section. Because we're getting kind of full here. So that's something I'm going to have to address. But we'll, we'll work it out. Uh, she also has these. Uh, she's also using Twinkle Jack's uh, uh, sneak as well. So she's got 12 move speed, which is awesome. Though her, her actual speed itself is not, not the best, but it's fine. The lovely Anne Macy is also here. So we're still running as a witch for now, which I have been kind of quietly enjoying. Um, this thing is I'm getting used to, not having her as a white mage, but it's been, it's not been too bad, you know? Um, yeah, her kit chance increases. Uh, ah, that explains it. Because she always has loads of vigor, so she's got really high crit hit chance. I always wonder why her, her hit chance has not been amazing. That's why her vigor's actually counting against her. Huh. So at full vigor, she actually gets a 15% penalty to hitting, but a 45% both buff to critting. Fascinating. I didn't know that. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, as for her masteries, I've been playing around with her a lot as well. Because the other witches kind of have a bit of flexibility with. And I want to kind of get hold of some of her witch stuff. And we have got a couple of ma witch masteries now up and running. We've got, she's now an arch witch. Um, so the damage dealt by ESP attack ability is increased by 5% for every ESP power mastery. I'll be honest, I don't quite know what counts in ESP power mastery. I guess I'll find out. But um, and hits really hard really really hard although she's got an esp power yeah of 1248 here um yeah esp damage plus 108 percent oh oh i see <laughs> she hits really hard but I mean, she does struggle to hit sometimes but yeah she is awesome at like taking on like single target really jacked health dudes like she can just one shot them it's frightening she also got Blood Witch here as well. So this runs with uh, the Origin of Life stuff we've had on for a while. Uh, so Liveliness, uh, we've had this on for a long time. Really awesome. Um, giving extra healing ability uh, and giving Vigor Recovery effect. Just just great to have. As uh, so a Blood Witch here, um, kind of plays into... Uh, we've got Life Draining now on Anne, which kind of pairs with Prosperity kind of nicely. Uh, the Arresting Force, we've not had on it so far. So if she hits someone and they somehow don't die... Uh, they have a 30% chance of getting constricted, which is nice, I guess. Um, but yeah, so Blood Witch. All eyes within the range of original life um, recover 20%, uh, recover the health that life drain does. Normally, you, yeah, you, you hit something that's bleeding, you get 20% of the damage uh, you restore. Blood Witch gives that to everyone that's being affected by original life. So everyone on four tile radius of Anne also recovers 20% health. That's pretty awesome. It means that you can afford to be a lot more aggressive with Anne and actually take on it. If someone's bleeding, you can go for them um, and look to get some passive restoration on the side, which is pretty sweet. Uh, we also got Arresting Force. Um, so debuff applied by Arresting Force is applied to all applicable enemies around her. So if she's in the amongst it, um, then Arresting Force will possibly constrict everyone that's around her in a four-tile radius, which is kind of cool. And uh, which is Jealousy, uh, which is the one that debuffs everything. Uh, she now gains 5 SP each time she for every move, move debuff. So, you know, that could be neat. Um, I don't know how useful it's going to be, but, but oh, she's, she's got it. Uh, not much else going on here as well. Uh, there's a few things on, I'm sure. Magic Training. Magic Control, I think I've put on her now. No, she already had that. There's something else she had, but I can't quite recall. 
It's fine. Either way, it's been interesting playing his hand. Um, unfortunately, I can't really go back. I could go back and play around and swap out her white mage stuff, but there's no point doing it right now. I was taking up a lot of her earth stuff as well. She just wasn't really using it this, so she's kind of pseudo scion in a way, but in a different in a different vein. I think she's doing all right for herself, you know. It's fun. fun. Uh, Hai Jing. We'll do Hai, Hai Jing next. Uh, Hai Jing has still not got quite all the health back. Uh, his mastery board is very funky. I'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, he's running uh, Night Suit currently, so he gets better chances in night missions, which there's a few of those coming up by the looks of things. Uh, but again, he's doing not too badly for himself. It's nice to have his uh, Dash of Gunfire back. I haven't missed that ability. As for his mastery board, so I'll get to the mastery sets in a moment. Um, his general board is pretty basic. Uh, close fire we've got here, uh, although still isn't doing tough. Close fire is basically just heavily buffing his um, shoot around him ability, basically just making it much much stronger, which is pretty cool. It's pretty decent ability, um, but he doesn't really have that many masteries on Bush because the ones he has on are pretty expensive. Um, a lot of the usual stuff here still, but he has tons of mastery sets that he does not yet have activated. So Iron Man, he could have 300 health if I put on muscle armor. I have no slots. Fire and resistance we've seen before. Undo on wheels, same thing. Uh, Mighty strike we've nearly got as well. If I get him uh, an extra attack slot, but yeah, the problem is for him is that all his slots coming on are abilities, and well, he's got some interesting abilities. If we get chain fire, it'd be nice to have back on him. Um, but I don't currently at the moment. I've got other stuff going on. Nimble fingers, uh, reducing vigor and castle because hiding does have a huge issue with restoring vigor if he's not being supported. So Nimble Fingers is helping significantly in that part. I can kind of just send him on his own uh, if need be. And he can kind of hold his own for quite some time, uh, which is pretty good. Uh, but yeah, loads of sets here. I mean, look at all these sets here. I've got like eight or nine sets that I'm like one away from. And I can switch into as I need to. I'm here for fire support, already dead for headshotting, chain fire. Um, I can get like reduced cooldowns and stuff like that. This is the end. Uh, I resist. Uh, I need resistance shot, which I don't have. I don't know where I picked that up, um, but I would give uh, time reductions, that sort of thing. So lots of lots, lots of cool stuff, you know. As for lovely Ray, uh, Ray has turned into quite the prospect. Again, when I first picked her up in this game, I was kind of concerned um, what she was going to be. Oh, I didn't have strength potions. Put those on. I was a little concerned about what she was going to be like, especially from our first couple of spins having her on our team. But it wasn't really fair. She was kind of behind on levels. Um, but she has turned into just a complete monster on the field, and it is absolutely glorious. Um, let's talk about her weaponry first. Yeah, so again, she still has the choice with her weapons. Uh, you can either go for a weapon that gives her attack power or one that gives her ESP. It doesn't make a big difference. Some ability She's got more abilities that need attack than ESP, but the ESP can have some interesting extra side effects on the extra on the grenade style especially if you're going down like the alchemy stuff and giving her upgraded grenades every now and again which is pretty good uh, our mastery sets here as well there's also a hell of a lot going on now at this point uh now that we've delving into the scholar stuff um which we have now managed to unlock loads of courtesy of kylie there's just there's so much going on here there's almost too many things going on um, Ernest Researcher here um, means that she can now yeah, make chemical conco concoction. Max level of unstable concoction goes up to 15 now, which I feel like that's been happening. Um, but I don't think that has been happening in my experiment. I've been doing it off screen. I feel like she's been hitting 10 and it's still been exploding. I don't know if that's actually working properly. Hmm, interesting. Uh, but Great Scholar, though, um, is helping. So our um, highest uh, highest set is Ability. Um, so she's getting plus 12%, plus 12%. So plus 24% hit chance because Ability is the highest there, which is really awesome for her throwing. And, of course, all about getting her trancing, keeping that overdrive going, and just like just going rolling, uh, rolling barrage. Really, really, really awesome. She's got a few curious sets as well coming up here as well. So Argonaut, I've put on Luck on Rain, which is not something I thought I'd be doing. But it turns out that Luck actually plays into quite a few of her sets, as you can see here, which is really awesome and really fascinating. Uh, Argonaut, you've seen before here, um, so you can get overcharged. 
if you go into lower health, also gives better luck chance, which is kind of cool, but I trigger her overcharge immediately with trancing, so it's not as relevant. We've got escape death, which requires something called cheating death, which I don't know what that is, but apparently every time we trigger those bits and pieces you can see, um, it's more likely cheating death happens. I'm guessing that means if she gets downed, she ignores the damage, I'm guessing, but I, I honestly don't know. We'll have to find it when we get there. And then we've got one that I'm really interested in, and that is Passion for Gold, which is an alchemist ability here. I need to get hold of Practiced Hand, so what I have to do is like get Attack to put onto Basic, and then get a couple levels to put that on. But Passion Gold is really awesome. So Equivalent Exchange um, would increase the chance of Exchange equivalently uh, would go up. Um, which is pretty awesome. Normally it's just a, it's 25%. I don't know if that means it's now 50%. Um, or if it's 50% of 25, which means it'd be 37 and a half. But either way, it's really cool because the equivalent exchange is giving Array buffs, which is playing awesomely into her trance stuff. And it just makes her like just, just, she just snowballs basics. Really awesome. Uh, does it also give better use of Alchemic Bag stuff? Um, and also, would, yeah, Make Chemical Concoction would, would increase. So it would increase by four at the start of every turn, which is kind of scary, actually. Um, and very easy to lose track of, but uh, Passion for Gold looks a lot of fun, and I do intend to put that on as soon as possible. But it's going to take a couple of levels uh, putting on things to improve basics. How she's done so few basics? I don't know, but that's kind of what it is. But uh, yeah, Ray, Ray, I'm really enjoying her down this alchemist route, um, and I do intend to, uh, to keep doing it. Uh, and yeah, quick exchange. Now that I understand how it works, um, and the fact that it gives a buff when it hits. Uh, yeah, I would definitely highly recommend doing that. So I think the Grenadier stuff is not bad at all, but I think Alchemist is far more interesting. I think far more rewarding in the end of the day. Look at this hit chance here. Hit chance, freaking 118% hit chance base. So, um, yeah, that's that's super awesome. Of course, health is an issue. You've got to be a bit careful. She's a bit glass cannony, um, but uh, it wouldn't be the first time I've dealt with the glass cannon stuff. Um, also, move distance to 13 is awesome. Uh, and she's got decent speed as well. And she is running the acceleration propeller, which was given us by Kylie, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, and that can boost her up a bit as well. Now, speed about Giselle. Giselle, funnily enough, I actually think is base currently our fastest character. Which is absurd because she's our sniper. But I honestly think she actually is. Uh, she's got a lot of equipment, which is giving her lots of speed and... No one else is like juiced like 100 plus, so yeah, she's getting, she's going first sometimes, which is really strange. Um, not too much is going on with Giselle. She's not, she's not going to change much, kids, I'm going to be really honest. Um, just in case of just building what she's got. Root of the Battlefield is awesome, uh, giving like, like four fire support activations. She just shoots so, so damn much. It is crazy. Um, I would like to get high ground sniping. I think that'd be good. Um, you know, but that's, you know, there's, there's some alright bits and pieces going on. One, uh, one headshot at a time would be alright, but it's like, I don't think this is that good. Shadow the Dark would also be cool. Um, uh, basically shooting people from out of line of sight, so you'd be able to start recovering, um, bits and pieces here. But the problem is, I can't, everything here is in sets, so I honestly think she'd have to get level 46 before I could put Shadow Sniping on. But really awesome when I do... But we've kind of got to get that, you know. Uh, she's got understanding on as well for reasons. A few people have got experience um, on them as well. Experience level things. Um, I don't entirely know why I've got that on you. Is there not something better I could put on you? Just looking quickly. Um, hmm. That's too expensive. Again, see, this is like maxed out here. And this, problem, this stuff here is really pricey. So it is creating some issues. Uh, Gun Lightning is really good for her, but obviously, again, that's also too expensive. Hmm, guess there's not much else to put on. Hmm. I wonder if that would pair with um, positioning. Not positioning. Um, there's a, there's a, a, one of these that gives her, um, puts her into... Hmm, there's something she's got. Oh, base defense. That's it. When you attack, you conceal. I assume that I pay into it. The thing is, Giselle, actually, because she picks up so much time back from some of her abilities. Um, like, yeah, position this. You know, she gets, she gains loads of time back. Um, like, rule the battlefield. Like, if she shoots some dead next to her, 
She's like recovering like 50 time units. It's absolutely nuts. Um, but yeah, she's pretty decent. Uh, what else we will talk here? Kylie! Kylie, Kylie. So Kylie obviously is the new entrant um, and has seen plenty of work going on here. She's not for level 35 yet, so I can't put on her height next level of stuff. I've got in C here, um, so there is an attack variant and a magic variant. And you'll notice that they change the attack and assist protocols as you go. So it's basically depending which one you want here. Uh, this one's really good, by the way. I managed to create. So there's loads of stuff for her to play around with. But she's got to get that level first. Um, as for her actual stuff here, you can see here, she's got loads of mastery stuff now. Lots of cool stuff here. Um, reinforced attack protocol. I've I've not actually seen this yet. Believe it or not, it's it's really hard to get her um, to get her spirit up because she's typically not really. She's doing a lot of other stuff, you know. She's moving. She's summoning robots. Uh, confusion's cool. Wait, so decoy. She tries to take some of the flat for the enemies. It's not guaranteed, but the decoy's really cool. I'll show that off there as well. Um, so there's you know there's a lot going on, but it's taking some adjusting. Uh, she does have. I have now separated out her boards as well into mechanics and hacking. Um. There's there's too much stuff for me here to go through, like, what everything does. I'm just going to highlight what all of these things do. If you want to pause and read them, feel free. I'll be brutally honest. I don't exactly know what all of these things do for Kylie. There's there's so much happening here. I don't... I don't really know. Uh, all I know is that I think, basically, she, she hits a lot more con consistently... Um, and she's got various buffs with her robot, which is kind of the idea. And also, yeah. Uh, is use summon robot. Or summon robot brings about um, counter-attack responsive attack is triggered. Uh, triggers by the way. So they can, like, support each other, which is neat. Uh, she's running loads of experience stuff, by the way. Not for faithful support, although that's pretty good. But I want to get hold of this Treasury of Knowledge, which increases all allies' experience gain 50%. It's pretty nuts here. So learning, understanding, insight, and instead of having supporter, you put on Great Scholar. I don't have the, the points for Great Scholar currently, um, but uh, it'd be pretty cool. Oh, so we've got this here as well, Master Maneuver. Um, so if, the, if your robot attacks an enemy, uh, the target's block and dodge chance decreases by half percent per Scholar Mastery that is equipped, which we've got a couple. Um... But uh, remote responsive attacks also automatically hit, uh, which is pretty awesome here. And this is basically just playing into stuff that we've already got. We've got, like, professional book is on, like, this stuff here, applicable. And both of these, I guess, professionalism. Which is giving crit chance here. We need something else, though, as well. So... I can't drop that. And I can't drop that. I can't drop that. <laughs> There's a lot of things I can't drop. So if I get one more a pointer, I guess I could take off professional and actually put treasure knowledge on. I could I wouldn't hate that. What would she get the bonus in? Um basic. So she would get uh, an extra 80, 80 health. It's not bad, you know. 80 health is 80 health, kids. I'm not gonna complain. I'll talk about her robots in a moment as well. That's something also been a lot of work on. Um, and by talk about it at the moment, I mean, let's talk about it now. So, uh, whole robot stuff I've been putting a lot of time into to kind of understand how it works here. Uh, we have three machines now, by the way. Uh, we've got our reinforced drone, we've got incineration drone, we've got a high speed drone. Um, so let's talk about the stuff that we've learned here. Drones have class levels, just like kind of how things work, but it works a little bit different if I go to the modified machine. So, basically, the way it works. If you get your normal up to 16, you can then upgrade it into a, re a remodeled, um, which gives you like a um, like a, a bonus perk you can put onto the machine. Up to 16, you then become reinforced, and then once to 16, you get complete and so so. And as you can see, as you get up these various points, you pick up more things that you can put onto your machines here. Some pretty, pretty good masteries further on down. Oh, look at this stuff here. Just all these just straight 10% reinforced, um, gains extra stuff as well. Lots of cool stuff here pretty nice um now the way it works if i go to uh module board so yeah she's got output reinforcement and weapon reinforcement so these are just module sets basically and this is what i showed you get not you get a selection of options of what to take and you work on what we've got here uh, i'm not going to go into do it detail on the actual drones bear in mind all modules are pretty damn expensive I've got 50 output here um and i'm still struggling here 
Stuff's expensive, uh, but uh, it's something you can delve into, which is pretty cool. Um, you know, and it's, it's kind of nice. Yeah, there's lots of stuff here. So he's got like uh, reinforced drones, pretty solid. Um, has a lot of armor. It's going to be pretty hard to defeat. Doesn't have the most health in the world, but can still take quite a pounding. And obviously when it's getting hitting, um, is also managing to uh, get extra XP going, which is pretty cool. Our incineration drone is more about straight damage. Also has a ton of health as well. Um, so again, frame what modules, uh, because frame is quite useful for, for this reinforcement module. Obviously, it's just absolutely stacked full of stuff here. And yeah, there are a few armor sets as well. I don't have a lot of these, because I think a lot of these are things that will take later on in their, um, in their, like, building sets, if you know what I mean. Uh, those leveling things at the bottom right. As you get more of those, I'm sure that'll start filling some of these. You can see from the module sets. I've only picked up a couple. I'm sure many of them I'll work out as we go. Um, and that, yes, he's got a reinforced fight flamethrower here, so, uh, and it's got, like, a uh, lot of stuff going on, so he, he, it hits a long way, he can hit, like, five, six tiles away, it's really awesome, and we've seen the danger that these fires can do, very scary, and then we have the high-speed drone, which is probably the coolest of the lot, actually, um, and the reason the high-speed drone is really awesome, if I go back here, the high-speed drone has a base speed of 156, its usual action time is 41 base. Remember, the, the minimum, the absolute minimum is 36 between turns. It also has a move distance of 18 base, which is also completely crazy. This thing can just fly around the map, no concerns whatsoever. And it's also boosted that you can get engine acceleration, which gives another 20 speed and two move distance. Which you might as well use because everyone's got decent fuel tanks. So this thing basically can be virtually maximum speed and can move about 30 odd tiles in a move. That is unbelievable. And these drones don't really care much about going up and down terrain. This thing is just, you'll have to see it kids, but this thing is, is absolutely astonishing. And it also has a uh, rapid movement as well. <laughs> So, uh, if we need to ascend, like, a really high, uh, like, go up or down a really steep incline, we can just use that to do that as well. So, this thing can basically go anywhere I want. has loads of crazy stuff. It doesn't have the most health, of course, and that is a concern. Its armor and resistance also isn't the best. But still, it is pretty, pretty awesome stuff. And there's a long way to go with these things as well. The operation rate slowly declines as they take damage in levels. I don't know if you can fix that later on. I got no idea, kids. We shall see. Um, so that's that. Uh, we do also have the beast as well. I'm going to be honest. I don't use Giselle's beast. It's just, it's one mechanic too many. I deal with so many mechanics in this game. I just, I don't have it in me to explore this. I would encourage you, if you were playing this game at this point, uh, feel free to explore it. And I bet you can have some really cool stuff going on. But it's just... There's only so much I can do, and there's only so much stuff I can cover. So this is the one thing that I've I've opted at this point just to I it's not for me. I'm gonna stay out of it. And besides, the masteries for these is really good for making masteries for other people anyway. So, you know, you might feel different. You might think, oh the hell with robots, and that's totally fine. Do it as you feel, but I think that's that's acceptable. Okay, so that's that. I don't know if there's much else to really cover here off the top of my head. There probably is something I'm not thinking about. Um, the thing is, it's just been, it's a lot been going on. I've been doing a lot of off-screen stuff, like doing, I've uh, hit here a few times. I'm um, getting loads of like size stones and stuff, getting hold of just various bits of equipment, uh, refreshing, resampling. Um, you know, doing some quest off screens. Um, nothing too interesting has come out of a lot of them, really. Um, and it feels like there is some other things as well that I probably... What I should probably be doing is writing this stuff down as I go in, like, my, my book. My little notepad thingy. Um, so I can go to these and say, right, tick this stuff off. Is this relevant? Not really anymore. Um, that's on me, kids. Uh, the only other thing I suppose I would say is that money is coming across pretty well. Um, I'm spending a lot of it, admittedly, but yeah, we are now making a lot of money courtesy of our activity reports. We're typically getting about 20 grand every time, um, which is crazy. Um, but it's pretty good. It means I don't have to worry too much. I am finding as well, I'm now buying a lot more as well. One thing I've noticed if I go to just like, say, say Camilla here, 
Um, so if we buy from her, for example, no, she's almost uh, beyond revered as well. It's insane. So we're already getting a 36% discount, 20% for being revered, 16 for having two businesses here. So we're getting a third off here. And it's getting to the point where I was previously just kind of using my cheap stuff and spending time making stuff as I go up. But it's getting close to the point where I, I might just start just buying the stuff legitimately. That doesn't mean I'm not going to make stuff, because there's some things that are really hard to buy or just really expensive to buy. But, like, these things, I can just make these now um, and rock and roll. So I'm good for this sort of thing for pretty much the rest of the game, I'm sure. Um, so that's pretty cool. She's by far the highest. I've been buying basically just tons of flame fragments, because a lot of crafting needs a lot of, uh, needs a lot of, a lot of stuff, so... Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much where we're at here at this point. Um, not too much else report on sort of particular notes. Um, I have got some high level equipment sitting around, level 35, 40, 45s. I've been making, uh, waiting to give to people when they hit those levels. We're not quite there yet. Um, Kylie is going to be absolutely bombing through levels. We think everyone else is, you know, like Irene's at 40. Um, everyone's going to be hitting sort of 40 fairly quickly, and that is definitely the plan. Sun doesn't have a leftover technique point because I just... I don't... I don't have anywhere to put it! <laughs> I don't have anywhere to put it at all, and I, I'd rather keep the stuff that he's currently got, so... Um, I guess I could take Electric Shock off. The problem is, what I put on? He's not really got anything is the issue, so it's it's a little... It's a little complicated, but we're... We're sussing it out, kids. We're sussing it out. Right, that's going to do for this little interlude. Now, uh, a couple of things. One thing I do want to say is that I don't want to be doing so many interludes. All right, I'm taking obviously a little. I'm doing this one because it's been a while since I've, I've I've recorded for this. I haven't been doing much. I've been doing like off-screen light stuff, but I do want to crack on with the actual story. They were like what? This is like coming up to like part sixty something, I think, and that's not including. This is like the sixth or seventh interlude. Um, and I would very much like to, you know, crack on with the game. We're only about halfway through the main story. Um, and I guess it goes to show that there is a lot of grind in this, if you want to delve into it. I've been trying to be as grindless as I can. Which is kind of like a lot of the, the little minor stuff I'm just doing off screen now. And just sticking mainly to the story. Um, which is what I would definitely do want to do. Um, and that's why, yeah, so we're doing cases. We're doing like the violent missions and stuff like that. But other than that, like, a lot of this stuff, I'm just basically off-screening um, at this point now. And um, that's, that, I think that's fine. You know, the story's been good. I've enjoyed it. Technically, we are a bit over-level at the moment. But obviously, we're playing on, like, Cruel and um, High Risk High Return, which I am still, I like that I'm doing that. But it justifies it being a few levels over, over the line just to kind of uh, help mitigate that a little bit. Um, but yeah, that's, that's about it really for the time being. Um, I don't really buy equipment from these guys anymore. I just make it, um, being honest, because the stuff that I make tends to be better. I mean, occasionally I might go to like Oleg and just see if he's got any interesting, because occasionally they do have, um, pretty interesting stuff on here, especially for like the bangles and stuff. But a lot of it is you only really ever get like the rare stuff, epic stuff you have to make. Um, and that is a problem. And again, like, so, so if I go to like a level 40 something, like, uh, you know, 35 years, right? We can get 45, but it's not that good. This isn't pretty, this is pretty decent, but it's fine, you know? So I would honestly say when it comes to weapon and armor, at this point, you should just make it, uh, because it's probably going to be a bit of quality and you can just kind of solve what you need. Um, and, you know, accessories are a little bit different, but I would say at this point now, I don't, I don't really buy from any of them. I just make everything I use, which is probably better. It's a little bit more tedious and time-consuming, maybe, but this is strong shooter. <laughs> this is not a short game, kids. It's not a short game. Um, so, yeah. Uh, oh, oh, one other thing I'll talk about, actually, speaking of crafting. Um, I have been trying to suss out ways of actually making money in this game, as opposed to just getting active reports and just selling loot. And there is some stuff you can actually do. So I've been playing around with the workbench and stuff. I'm trying to suss how can you make money from crafting. So you can like, obviously like craft like uh, equipment here. Like if I said, this boom spray. You know, I can set it for 276. The problem is, is that the equipment, your the stuff you're putting in is, um, I mean, it's not a million miles. But a lot of this stuff is like you could make it, but it's not really worth it. You're making minimal profit at best. 
It's all about those margins, you know. But um, what I've been doing is making tools. Tools are surprisingly valuable. Uh, there are also now loads of tools, courtesy of Kylie. Now that she's in the team, uh, we can make loads of these. And let's have a sample of some of them. So you've got like the Arms Alchemy Bag, plus 70% block, um, gives extra unstable chemical concoction as well. Uh, so obviously this is to go for, um, this is what you would give to uh, Ray, for example, stuff like that. Some of this is specifically for like, kind of designed for classes. A uh, Berserker Sphere, which is interesting, 50 health. Um, if you're raged, and it's not your foot turn, and you get four damaging attacks, it just becomes your turn immediately. Pretty cool. Um, there's lots of interesting stuff here as well. Dark Stalker just gives you extra item use. Uh, scales here. Um, damage taken decreases by buffs. Uh, the Shining Scale. Restoring Vigor on hits. Um, the Charms we know about. Uh, gem Crafting Machine we've seen before. Uh, the Gold Molar Charm. Uh, charm. Attacking the enemy with physical debuffs um, decreases their block. The, the gold wing. There's no enemies in your line of sight at the start, beginning of your turn. You get an acceleration, which is plus 30 speed. It's not bad. Uh, other interesting things as well. So you've got the uh, the craftsman's aid kit uh, for assist protocols. And again, you can see how this stuff kind of delves into yeah, and there's these sets. I've never really been delving into these sets, being brutally honest. And maybe I should delve into the set stuff. So I bet some of it's actually pretty good. But the, the equipment I've got on people is just really good anyway so i'm just not really worried about it but i would suggest if you're not if you're kind of not really doing equipment too much stuff and like making loads of it and finding really good stuff maybe delve into this this um set stuff i bet you could find some fun stuff uh traps here for giselle um that's something but anyways so what do you want to be doing here oh here's the improved seals here by the way so uh power increases by x mastery so I, i'm tempted to give the rune of lightning to uh, but the thing is you need the masteries of that specific element which i don't have a lot on already anyone no one's like a magic magic caster as such we might get on later on though so anyways what i'm trying to say here is you should make tools and equipment and sell it my example example is say um there's two examples so i've been like making these the ultra high quality uh lost item collector's bag so you can sell this for 900 veal per to buy it, you need an indigo fiber, which is 80, and a skin, which is 120. So in theory, you put in 200 veals worth of stuff and get out 900. Decent money. But where I think the real money is to be made is grenades. And what you can do is make the upgraded grenades super cheap. You can make absolute buckets on these. So let's say, for example, the uh, incendiary grenades. So these all require blue upgraded metal parts, which can be a little bit of a pain. The flash grenade actually funny if it doesn't just needs basic upgraded parts. So basically, yeah, upgraded flash grenades are 10 here. Um, but if I take any of these, so let's say the smoke grenade. So uh, to sell it's 32. Uh, blue upgraded metal parts is free. Green fragments one. Four veal, 32 veal. It's 800 percent It's absolutely nuts. There are also some materials that also prove to be very surprisingly cost uh you can make a lot of money on as well uh one of which is down here so these superconductors i believe uh semiconductors actually as well so semiconductors are like some of the most profitable things you can make in this entire game you can sell it for 30 all you need is upgraded metal parts which cost one to sell and green fragments are one uh if you need upgraded metal parts by the way you can go buy those um, it turns out that Maximilian has all sorts of funky stuff. His shop does um, change around from time to time. What he exactly sells does very little bit. Um, so sometimes he'll sell the rare up metal parts. Sometimes, does, but you know, the standard metal parts, I think, are like 14 vil or something. So as long as you've got those in the green fragment, you can literally buy from him, um, make stuff, and sell to him at profit. It's pretty awesome. Semiconductors as well yeah, are, um, are really good. Uh, so superconductors and semiconductors. Let me go back to that to show that off. But yeah, it's, it's a useful little way of just like making money out of like your... Because we're now at the point of the game where a lot of the basic stuff you're just not really using. It's just sitting in your inventory. You might as well do something with it. So why not go and... Uh, why not go make some stuff, you know? Um, so if I go to... Uh, parts, I think it was. Uh, yeah, so semiconductors here. Yeah, just just absolutely great money. Superconductors also are not bad too. A bit pricier though. Uh, if you've got loads of upgraded parts and elements, you can sell these for 55 per, which is also pretty good. But I would say semiconductors, 
buy these remember on the sale it's like 20 veal or something um green fragments you can get loads of um and just sell them for for profit i think is is not a bad little idea there's a couple other ones as well if i was to go down the list here um how do i uh ascending you want to basically look to get the basic stuff really um, and all these chipped, um, like, primals and stuff, you can basically just break these down into, like, dusts and fragments and stuff like that. So you can make stuff back up. It's pretty good. Um, but, yeah. Uh, instantly keep what I wouldn't do because it requires beast skin, which is pretty valuable stuff. Um, but, yeah. Semiconductors, 100%. Grenades, 100%. Um, and, yeah. Just go ahead, make it, and sell it. Uh, and you'd be surprised how much money you can actually make from all this stuff that's just sitting around not really doing anything. It's pretty neat. All right, then that's going to be all for this little interlude again. I do intend this to be probably the last interlude for now. Um, we might have another one whenever we get whoever is going to be next in our party. I don't know who that's going to be. It's hard to know who that's going to be. I've got a couple of guesses. Um, but uh, Isaac's gone and joined the freaking Black Tigers. So who the hell knows at this point as the plot just continues to just completely go off the wall and keep me guessing but who knows i find some some stuff we shall see anyways thanks for watching everyone um we'll be back for more of your regularly scheduled troubleshooting fairly soon take care everyone i'll see you then